Okay, we are recording. Good afternoon. Thank you for joining us for our Mulberry Talent Partners Leadership Conversation today. I'm going to give everyone just another little bit to log on. Okay, it looks like everyone is starting to roll in. I'm Laura Back. I'm the Director of Marketing and Events for Mulberry Talent Partners. Thank you so much for joining us today for our Mulberry Talent Partners Leadership Conversation. If you're new to Mulberry, welcome. Just a little intro to us. We are a full service staffing and recruiting agency headquartered in Portland, Oregon with an office in Silicon Valley. We specialize in the professional placement of human resources, professional and financial office, payroll and operations positions for direct hire, temp to hire and temporary positions. I would encourage you to check us out online at mulberrytalent.com where you can see links to previously recorded leadership conversations as well as upcoming leadership conversations and learn more about our service offerings. I wanna jump right into introductions. We are joined today by Lauren Francis who is our fabulous founder and president. Lauren founded Mulberry Talent Partners in June of 2017, bringing over 25 years of entrepreneurial and talent acquisition experience. And we are so excited to welcome our guest speaker today, Jill. Jill, welcome. Thanks, Bill. Well, yeah. Jill brings over 20 years of human resources experience with some large employers, including well-known names like Jeldwin, Lesh Empires, and Nike. Jill has spent the last five years supporting a creative team in developing compensation and uh, benefits communications for a Fortune 500 client. And she also works with a local HR and benefits consulting team in supporting public and private sector employers. We want our session today to be very interactive. So please feel free to use the Q&A yep. function and we will do our best to answer any and all questions. And then we're so pleased to announce today that Jill is going to be doing a giveaway of two 90 minute sessions given to two attendees today. Um, and we will announce those later on this week. So without further ado, I'll go ahead and pass it on over to Jill and Lauren. Good afternoon, everyone. It's good to see you all again. And we are so, it's just such a privilege to welcome Jill today. Uh, Jill and I met uh, several years ago when, while uh, Jill was at Nike and uh, have been great friends and collaborators ever since. I've been, you know, I've been so impressed and we all have with Jill's uh, experience and her contribution to benefits communications. And we just could not, continue our leadership conversations without including Jill to share uh, all of all of uh, what she's going to share today with you. So welcome, Jill. Thanks for joining us. Thanks, Lauren. And just a big, huge thank you to the whole Mul Mulberry Talent team. And it's just wonderful to work with you. So I appreciate this opportunity. And uh, Warren, everyone, this is little Joe, my assistant behind me. And sometimes he likes to make a contribution. So <laughs> <laughs> um, sorry if you hear from him. Let me get started. So what I want to cover today is how to create an engaging benefits communication that's really effective, especially when you're not a communications expert. Um, so a couple of key takeaways today, I want you to walk away with just a basic understanding of the goals of benefits communication. What do we want to accomplish with it? What are some of the obstacles that we're up against when we try to talk about benefits? So we all know maybe the content can be a little dry and un uninspiring. Uh, I want to help you get started on creating engaging materials and then share some tips and tricks from our marketing friends uh, and then end up with just wrap this up with some high level resources of experts that know much more about what they're doing than I do. So how I got here is I spent a career as Lauren mentioned in HR and benefits and I used to get on the wipe off board so often. I'm sure some of my colleagues would um, relate to this. I would get on the wipe off board to explain to employees about their deductibles or the, how co-insurance works or how to take a leave of absence. And I started just copying that information down and turning it into handouts. And then eventually um, in the evolution of digital content, I was able to 
post web materials and share it more widely with employees. And I just saw how valuable it was for employees to better understand their benefits package and for the communication to make it simple to understand. So really, there's kind of three critical areas where benefits communication can make a difference. So essentially, we want employees to effectively use benefits as that's the end goal. And they can do that if the information that they receive is simple, relevant, and relatable. And set up in a way where they can actually navigate the content when it's relevant to them. Um, and you know, this all of this information really helps HR teams as a valuable resource, position themselves as even a more valuable resource, especially when employees are working remotely, typically like we're seeing right now with the pandemic. And it helps to build trust within the HR team if the communication is easy to understand. Here's just a few of the obstacles that we know about when we try to create engaging benefits communication. The obstacles uh, are really numerous. Um, as I mentioned, not everyone thinks benefits is as interesting and juicy as I do. So understanding that uh, employees also get just bombarded with all kinds of desperate messages. <laughs> you know, there might be information from payroll about their paycheck and then another email about open enrollment and another email about a new program. And so all of these desperate messages can really create a lot of confusion and almost disinterest in key messages that you're trying to share. There's also a lot of legal guardrails on benefits materials. And this is understandable. We don't want to overpromise and underdeliver or you know, make any missteps with all the regulations that are tied to benefits. We also have to remember that there's a lot of different ways employees can digest information. Um, not everyone likes to read information. Some of them want to watch. Some people would rather watch a video or listen to a podcast and or, you know, access the information from home. And still many people enjoy getting snail mail. <laughs> um, I know the other day I caught myself absorbed in a catalog I got because I could actually sit down and turn the pages and the pictures were really glossy and it was it was fun. And I think we also have to remember, unlike other aspects of HR, employees' families are often a huge part of the benefits communication. So it's important to remember this engagement needs to also extend to people outside the company directly. And, you know, many health plan designs are so complex and just overwhelming amount of um, terminology and acronyms, and that's a lot of complicated information. And this one's really critical. So it's important to remember that each ex employee's experience is really unique. And when it comes to using healthcare and benefits, it's so personal and uh, individual to them. Uh, that they're going to want to find information in a way that's meaningful to their specific needs. Okay, getting started on creating engaging materials, you really want to gather your own organizational material. So really three tricks to this. Look for guiding principles, review internal branding, and follow the employee experience. So to dig into this a little bit deeper, Guiding principles really help set up your organization's true north. So maybe one of your company's um, guiding principles is um, just well-being of employees and their families. And then um, you want to use that information consistently so that your communication ladders up to what your organization's overall mission is. And then internal branding, if you're not familiar with this, and I wasn't, because I, again, I have this background in benefits and HR and total rewards where I didn't realize the value 
of internal branding and building on your external brand. And I'll show some examples of what I like and what company, how companies are using internal branding. And then the employee experience. So once you realize how employees and their families use benefits, you can craft up your communication to make it relevant for them. So here's a couple examples. This is a employee value proposition. This kind of shows you a framework on how an organization's mission uh, works and then how to incorporate communication into these areas. Here's a great example of the use of internal branding where the external information, external branding comes to life internally as well. So the Home Depot, I think, does a great job of this. So you'll see um, their orange logo, very recognizable um, on the external side. And they pulled this internally to showcase an orange life advantage. So now what you're seeing internally is a snippet of their actual employee experience portal. And I just like how these connect the dots for employees and they also connect the dots for recruiting. Um, another great service offered by Mulberry if you're looking for it. But it's important, I think, that the, um, the experience, the employee experience begins even pre-hire. So I just, this is a great example. And as far as creating and reviewing the employee experience, I like to use the core principles of design thinking. And if you're not familiar with what design thinking is, is it's a human-centered approach to innovation. And it really comes from designers and focuses on needs of people tech possibilities and the requirements for business success. So when you apply this design thinking to employee communication, you really focus on what are those needs the employee has and then what's the whole benefits ecosystem? Because you could have one vendor for your EAP, another vendor for prescription drugs, another vendor for leave of absence. You know, so I think when you look at the whole ecosystem and the complexities around trying to navigate benefits, there's a lot of opportunities with this design thinking model to make that simpler. And then of course, success measurements. So you want success to roll up into um, being able to measure what you're doing and how effective your communication is. So here's a quick example of design thinking when it comes to the employee benefits experience. So what I've done here is I've created benefit information by life events. So your employees, when they go to your portal or they're looking for information, they're not gonna read the whole summary plan document. <laughs> they're looking for specific information that is relevant to their situation. So. Maybe they want to do some retirement planning, or maybe they're adopting a child, or you know they're newly hired and they need to know what they do. So here's an example, again, of applying design thinking into the employee experience. One of my tricks, I'll share my tricks, is to get started with mind mapping. And this is a way to kind of just have a brain dump. What are all the things you want to cover? Um, it kind of helps you um, push through kind of a more creative approach where typically we don't all think in a linear fashion, so we don't outline it perfectly. And if you can just scribble things on a piece of paper, and I'll show you an example of this, it really helps you capture information, and then reorder it in a way that kind of makes sense. So here's a quick picture of one of my recent mind maps. I was helping a client promote a new program with Fitbit Care, and so I just started to, that was the main goal. So promoting a new program with Fitbit, and then um, from there, I branched out to my ideas. So each branch is a key idea, and there's no 
right way or wrong way of doing this. So I like to touch on the why behind a new program and then what communication pillar does it ladder up to. I like to talk about a whole campaign idea, uh, all the ideas. So in this case, we had an internal champion and we also did a video and a podcast, which were really fun to support the promotion. And we also focused on really key messages. So what's in it for um, the employees and their families, how self-care can become a really great habit, especially during a pandemic. And then we talked about measures of success. How do we want to measure this? And then I went through that, just like the, the fundamental basics and the practical strategy around uh, what the program is and how to use it. So more tips from our marketing friends on creating information. So it's really critical to understand your audience. Uh, it sounds simpler than it is. So, you know, I think not only who your audience is, but how they receive information. So maybe English is a second language. You know, maybe you need to reach family members. Maybe your corporate office receives information a little bit differently than your field team and, and so on. So really um, information is consumed one of two ways or maybe both ways. I mean, there's still, it's kind of old school to do snail mail, but we're home a lot more these days <laughs> and personalized home mailers really go a long way. Um, and then digital information. So personalizing content if you can, um, creating videos and podcasts have really become a great way for employers to reach their employees and their frontline front line workers or essential workers too. So they can listen to the podcast anytime and really focus on getting specific information in quick nuggets. And then town hall meetings. I mean, don't, don't forget the importance of just staying connected with your whole organization. Here's just a quick kind of diagram of how communication is consumed. So it's kind of ranked from simple to create to more complex to create and cost effective versus, versus more costly. Um, you know, it's everything from a dedicated Slack channel. If you're not familiar with Slack, it's a real simple um, kind of instant messaging tool. Podcasts, I mentioned I'm a huge fan and then you know, personalized print materials, while more costly and more complex to create, really are effective still. Another marketing trick is just tell stories. You know, I know, as we mentioned, benefits can be a little dull, and there's a neat opportunity to take information and tell a story that gives a why behind it. So here's an example of a message that I had to communicate. So basically a therapy was added for um, certain people on the autistic spectrum. And so you can see my before content was pretty dry and to the point. And after I took, an, I took a storytelling approach. So I added a headline, I added an icon, and I talked a little bit about how the employee resource group focused on best treatment practices and really wanted to enhance uh, covered services for folks on the autistic spectrum. And then a little bit more detail about what ABA stands for, because again, we want to avoid health or benefits related acronyms, and then where to learn more information. So here's a great example of how storytelling brings your content to life in a relatable way. Here's a great way to organize digital content. Again, another marketing tip. So um, if you can create your content in a way where people will find it really simple to use, you know, like get an ID card <laughs> here, having surgery, learn more, you know, instead of just a complete list of where you might find information now, you've created buttons where of uh, content 
that helps the employee you have a navigated experience based on what they need information on. And then I love examples of great um, benefits content. So since we're all kind of in the same boat right now with PPE and trying to get back to the office for the facilities, here's, I stole this from a friend with her approval to showcase how she promoted helping employees understand how to be PPE prepared. And she made a kind of fun, you know, white gloved and hand washed, um, six feet of separation, the how to, you know, make sure that your eyes still sparkle while you're a mask wonder. I mean, I just thought this was really creative, engaging and interesting because our audience is um, folks working in the hospitality industry. That's all I've got. Just yeah. um, some quick resources here if you're interested uh, of people that are really expert in benefits communication and kind of staying on top of what's new in our industry. Wow, Jill, second time I've seen it, still riveting. <laughs> It's great. Oh, Thank you. So, so useful. In fact, one of our panelists just uh, re recommended a useful book as well, or our, uh, one of our- Oh, our, that's a great idea. Thanks for the idea, yeah. Yeah, so uh, one of our panel, one of our participants I mentioned. So um, yeah, so a couple of questions. I hopefully will have a couple of questions come in. However, one of the questions that we had as we were uh, working together was how do employers effectively reach frontline essential workers with communication? Oh yeah, this has gotten a little tricky. Um, you know, I think I mentioned I'm, I'm kind of partial to podcasts. Mm -hmm. What I like about that is relatively inexpensive to um, purchase the equipment and have the information recorded and you can do it real time and then post it and make available to employees when they have time to listen. So if you're supporting a hospital staff or some, you know, or a nursing home team, they can now listen to information maybe on their commute or, you know, um, walking their dog. So I think I'm really partial to, um, podcast. And then uh, one of our participants has a great comment here too, where self-service portals showing videos. So if you can record videos, again, make that content accessible when employees have time to review it instead of, um, you know, hosting meetings. Um, I also like a concept too with communication where I've seen HR teams get really creative and start having set office hour times and just open channel Zoom calls where, you know, call in and catch up with us and touch base. So I think it's a couple of neat solutions out there. That is so, your information is just so helpful. <laughs> I'm just so glad. Oh, thanks. Yeah, I'm just so happy we were able to bring this content and your information to our viewers, and um, I'm certain that everyone is getting just great information from you. I wanted to also ask about, um, since open enrollment benefit fairs aren't being done in person this year, how are employees promoting benefits during open enrollment? And what suggestions or recommendations do you have? Oh, you know, I've seen some really, again, I just love how my, how creative my HR colleagues are getting this year around communication and getting benefits information to people because I actually feel like benefits are having their day in the sun. <laughs> <laughs> the pandemic has created this uh, whole new worldview on how valuable benefits really are now that, that they weren't before this, they still were, but um, in new ways, you know, between digital health tools, I mean, what we're doing today, virtual Zoom situations, I mean, there's so much good information out there. And through open enrollment, I've seen where companies are hosting virtual benefit fairs. So and one example is maybe they'll have 
all their medical plan representatives, maybe they have dual choice between Kaiser and Providence, let's say, and they'll have, you know, 20 minutes of with each and set those um, account people up from those from the medical vendor side, the plan side, in a way to really address core information that people are interested in. I mean, what's it gonna mean when we get a vaccine for COVID? I mean, how accessible will this be? Or can we get our flu shots now? You know, like really help the vendor uh, pitch information that is relevant and valuable in the moment you know, in addition to talking about how benefits will work for next year. Hmm. That's very, very helpful. Uh, another question, uh, with so many um, various benefit vendors creating their own communications material, how are yeah. employers using it effectively without creating confusion? Oh gosh, that's such a good question. You know, I used to struggle with this when I worked on the employer side because every benefits vendor thought they had the best communication strategy. <laughs> and often they did, but again, when you think about the employee or, you know, in this case, you know, the whole family, the member using your benefits portal, the last thing you want is a whole bunch of disparate pieces. I mean, you want to make sure that the EAP knows who the medical plan is and they need to know who, who, is the prescription drug vendor. They need to know who uh, handles virtual care <laughs> situations. And um, so something I used to do and require this of all the vendors is they had to get to know each other. So I would host meetings, now it would be virtual, but I host a meeting where every benefits vendor had to show up, show us their material, get to know each other and talk about an interconnected experience for employees and their families when benefits were going to be used. Mm -hmm. And that really helped to smooth out the messaging and communication and centralize uh, a strategy around a great experience when benefits were used. Now, do you remember a time when benefits were not necessarily thought about this way? When, when was that? I mean, when did things start to transform in the way in which uh, corporations and companies uh, shared this material with their employees? Oh, that's a good question too. Um, and I'm old, so I'll date myself. <laughs> you know, I think I would say just about 20 years ago, there was a transition from siloed benefits, retirement information, and payroll to a real strategy around total rewards and a value of what it means to work for, the, for your company. Mm -hmm. And I think HR also has taken a transformational shift from pretty administrative transactional work to one of being a real value added strategy partner to the C-suite and getting a table at the C-suite. You know, I'm excited to see CHROs now. And, you know, that's even relatively new in the last 15 years. So I think that in combination with the spend, once the CFOs were saying, holy cow, what are we spending on these benefits anyway, Jill? And I would show them the cost for employee. They really wanted to make sure employees understood that value and what it meant as part of working at the company. Fantastic. Thanks so much. Well, we are already at the end of the 30 minutes. It went by so quickly. I just wanted to quickly share some of our upcoming conversations. Um, these first two listed are career conversations, but I would encourage you to check them out. Uh, this week, we're going to have Stacey Lane, who's a career coach, talking about LinkedIn and personal branding. Uh, on November 5th, we'll be, we'll be welcoming Dana Pratt, who's going to be talking about networking and why it's important for your entire career, um, and not just for people who are actively searching for a new job. On November 10th, we'll welcome Alex Kerr, who's going to be talking about learning and development and sort of how to start that process um, in developing training sessions. Then we're going to pause for the rest of the year, kicking back off in early January with a 
really important topic on diversity, equity, and inclusion with Isaac Dixon. So we're really excited. We're going to have an upcoming lineup in January and February that are really exciting. So be sure to check us out. Here's how to stay in touch. We'd welcome you to connect to Lauren and Jill on LinkedIn, and then I'll be in touch with the winners of the 90 minute one-on-one uh, -on -one sessions with Jill in the next couple of days. And we'll announce that in an email to all attendees as well. So just in closing, thank you for choosing to fly with Mulberry. We know you have a lot of options in terms of webinars. And so we really appreciate you taking the time to join us and hope that you found today to be informative and valuable. So thank you, Jill and Lauren for a really great leadership conversation. Thanks so much. Thanks, Jill. Thank you. Bye everyone. Bye, everyone, have a good week.